Ciao. Hi, I am Alf from Medicaly, and today I will be asking some questions to Sena. Hi. And that questions are the questions that like most of you are keep asking us, and I will ask her to introduce herself first. Then you will be asking questions. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Dr. Sena Akyun. I'm a medical doctor here in Italy. I studied all throughout my medical journey here in Italy, in Rome. I studied in Sapienza University. Um, I came here in 2017 and I've been a doctor here since 2024 June. Um, so for the last, uh, how much does it make? Like 10 months, I've been a doctor here in Rome. Um, and I've been working, so I'm very happy to be answering questions here right now. But before we start, I want to ask where exactly we are, because you're almost a local now. Thank you, thank you for the compliments. So right now we're in front of the Castel Sant'Angelo, so the castle of St. Angels, which is a very big tourist interaction here in Rome, which is also very close to where I live. Um, this is right next to the Tevere River, so we're actually on the other side of the Tevere River, um, right in front of Vatican, actually in front of St. Peter's, and um, it's a very yeah, nice actually, spot. Actually, yeah, we chose one of the perfect places to have this interview. Yeah, right. Okay, so can you tell me, like, the time that you were graduating, what was on your mind, what were the possible paths that you could take? Like, did you already know everything? Were there like some services that were providing you this kind of information? And what was on your mind? Like, can you go back in time and just tell me? Okay, so um, in Italy, from when you're in like the fifth year and fourth, you're supposed to actually write your thesis. Mm -hmm. And historically, Italians used to write their thesis in the area where they wanted to do their specialization. For me, I wrote to, I decided to write my specialty thesis in neurology. So from fourth year on, like the second half of fourth year on, I was actually following the neurology department, the movement disorders clinic. So I was working with patients with like Parkinson's and essential tremor, etc. I decided to do that upon um, spending some months in the UK where I actually spent some time doing research on neurology and on essential tremor. So upon coming, to Italy, uh, coming back to Italy after this research period, I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. So upon graduation, I actually wanted to do that. But throughout the two years that I actually spent in the neurology department, I realized that that is not quite what I wanted to do. So before graduation, I found myself in a bit of a blank space where I didn't know what I wanted to do. So it was a bit of a chaotic period, I'll be honest. Um, upon graduation, like right before graduation, you actually have to spend some months um, one month in a, um, a clinical unit, one month in a surgical unit, and mm -hmm. one month in general medicine for you to understand what you want to do later on in life. Mm -hmm. So upon graduation, I had some ideas about what to do, but I didn't really have a certain idea about what I wanted to do. Sorry for interrupting, but these are assigned by the university? These are assigned by the okay, university. Okay, perfect. Like you're sent to those departments by the university, mm -hmm. and then obviously you can go to your professors and ask for additional um, experiences, let's say. You can okay. ask for additional time in other um, parts of hospital so as a they're giving you a chance to kind of discover what you want to do after. exactly to have an idea okay. of what life is as a doctor in the hospital as a doctor in the private practice as a doctor in, as a family medicine doctor you know like as in yep. different um, parts of doctor life let's say like you okay. have different paths that you can follow so upon graduation I actually didn't have much of an idea about what I wanted to do because I liked all parts of medicine like I, whatever I went I liked it <laughs> Wow. So upon graduation, Bethlehem. yeah, right? But it happens to a lot of um, classmates of mine. Like we okay. like studying a lot of things and then upon graduation, we don't have an of idea about what we wanted to do. So then I started researching and I started asking some of the people that graduated before me and some of my professors about like guide me, you know, to have, give me an idea about what I wanted to do. Um, so I realized that I had three paths that I could follow as a graduate. I could either be a specialized doctor, doctor through doing the specialization route, which is through the taking the exam of SSM, so Concorso SSM, which would, um, upon obviously ranking in a certain, uh, like having a certain point and ranking in a certain place, that would um, allow me to get into some specialization paths. Mm -hmm. So I could do, for example, neurology, neurosurgery, cardiology, cardiosurgery, and like things like that. Or I could be a family doctor through doing the family medicine path. Mm -hmm. Or I realized that upon graduation for a few years, I could just work as a doctor without specialty, which is what I chose to do because so. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, let me take some time. And as a graduate doctor, while I earn some money, mm -hmm. let me have some experiences and 
choose a path from there, which is what I'm doing right now. As for the third thing you said, you can just work as a doctor and you are not a specialist, so you can do anything you want to do or there are like some limitations I mean, for you? I mean, it's not necessarily everything, right? Because obviously you can't perform brain surgery right upon graduation, so there are some limits as to what you can do. However, there are many paths that you can take and even if you're not paid, you can do something that's called affiancamento, which is like uh, an internship that you can do next to some doctors which lets you see what you want to do. So maybe throughout the day, for four hours, you do a work that you're paid for, and then after those four hours, you go to a hospital, and you go to a clinic, you go to a blood donation unit, and then you see what that is like, so for you to understand, which is the route I, pa I picked. I just want to say, as a non-specialist doctor, obviously you can't do a lot of things, right? Like There are lots of limitations upon what you can do, and I wouldn't suggest that route upon someone for 10 years or 20 years or for the rest of their life. But for the first first or second year that you have upon graduation, it's a great time for you to earn some money, understand what you want to do, and then upon understanding what you want to do, it's a great way for you to create a life in Italy. Okay, so I want to ask something very important. Yeah. So since you were a non-European citizen mm -hmm. living in Italy and mm -hmm. studying medicine in Italy, mm -hmm. did you feel any like limitations for your career path compared to Italian? <laughs> Or did you feel any like disadvantages since you were a non-European student studying here and you wanted to build a life here? I think that's a great question and I think that is a question that's in the mind of a lot of international students, yeah. which was also in my mind. I believe the main problem you can have as an international student is the lack of knowledge of Italian, which is something a lot of people have to pass through. For example, my colleagues that did not um, get a certain level of fluency in Italian mm -hmm. really struggled with that. Um, my privilege, let's say, was the fact that I actually reached a certain competency in Italian and I actually can speak Italian above a certain level, which uh, let me do a lot of different works. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that I actually felt a lot of discrimination. I know some people from not having a lot of uh, padronenza, like in the sense of a lot of um, competency about, uh, on the language, they felt some type of troubles because obviously if you're going to take care of patients who speak only Italian, you need to be able to speak Italian, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a problem. Um, Paperwork-wise, I will be honest, Italy as a student for paperwork is very hard, but upon, you, upon graduation, especially if you get offered a contract, which is what happened in my case, I got offered several contracts one upon the other. Um, which is not because like I graduated with a good level, but it wasn't because I was such a competent student, but, but because there is actually the lack of doctors here in Italy. So they offered me these contracts because there was actually the necessity of doctors. Um, they really facilitated my way into getting mm -hmm. a permesso long term, so getting a residence permit long term. So, so they offered you contracts. Yes. How did it work? Okay, so you were like, okay, now I'm looking for a job as a doctor. Yes. And how was the process of finding that job or like the contracts that they were offering you? Like, I how mean, did it work? It depends for everyone. Like, it's different for everyone, like in any country of the world. But uh, there are some WhatsApp groups that you can mm -hmm. enter to. There are some Facebook groups that you can enter to. Then there are obviously other people that did this path before you. In my case, there weren't many people. But for example, when someone that just newly graduated, I tried to help them out. I tried to give them a hand. Um, usually, it's by the word of the mouth because Italians are very informal in that way like they really like to pick people that they know even if they're not very sure of yeah. their competency yeah. right so it's better if you know someone especially from your university maybe they give you a hand and that's how it goes but also you can just use your graduation they use your degree and you can just ask for spots on websites that look for doctors or like on whatsapp groups that look for doctors um, in my case sometimes it happened that I just went to like some ambulance companies because I wanted to work in the ambulance to have some experience in the mm -hmm. emergency setting and I literally went to the ambulance I saw an ambulance in a place and I was like hi I'm a newly graduate doctor I know I have this education I did these courses can I work with you and they gave me the mail address in that point and okay. then I found the job through that which actually happened like it's not uh, some American story yeah, you know? it, it also sounds like a freelancing thing like yeah. you're just you know working for different ambulance companies hospitals yeah, yeah so there are like a lot of opportunities and since you said that like in Italy they need doctors, I think they're making it easy even for non-European citizens to actually work as a doctor. Yes, yes, there's definitely a deficiency. Okay, so let's start talking about like general living conditions. I mean, not living conditions, working conditions as a doctor. Okay. Like, can you just briefly tell me how is the working environment? 
how is being a doctor in Italy, in an Italian hospital? Please. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to say, which I believe is important in any country, is that everyone thinks mm -hmm. once you are the best medical student, so the one that gets the highest points, the one that does the most extracurriculars, extracurriculars you will become the best doctor in the places you go, which is mm -hmm. not really the reality. What happens is that your soft skills, so your people skills, your ability to communicate with the patients and your yeah. ability to com like uh, communicate with the people above you, it actually counts much more than your actual medicine background because every doctor has similar backgrounds to you. So the fact that you graduated from medicine isn't actually this much competitive. Like everyone yeah, is a doctor, yeah, yeah. you know? And you have to be the doctor that is maybe in a way the most charismatic, let's say, you know, like the it's one that is... It's another skill that you have to Exactly. Get. Yeah, and yeah. it really helps you in the work life, especially as an immigrant. It really facilitates your relationship yeah, with exactly. Italians and with the system. That is definitely a thing. The second thing I can say is that um, the pay is not that bad. Like mm -hmm. the many people believe if you go to the specialization route, the amount of pay that you get throughout the specialization. So in the formation of specialization is actually quite low. It's like a thousand six hundred euros net a month, mm -hmm. which is quite low for a lot of Italian cities. The same for all of the specializations. Same for all of the specializations, okay. apart from some of them in which there are the deficiencies. In that case, they give you an extra 300 euros, but still at most it's like yeah. 1,900 euros, which is not that much of money. Mm -hmm. But if you do, again, if you take the route that I took, which is the one that I know the most, obviously, yeah. um, you can actually earn quite a, much, quite a lot of money. Most of the time you get paid at least 20 euros an hour, especially if you're in Rome or like mm -hmm. in that area. So even if you work just, let's say, 40 hours a week, right, which is the usual week yeah, that everyone yeah. works, that makes 800 euros times for 3,200 uh, 3, euros. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm, it's a quite good amount of money. Yeah, in Italy, uh, yes. I have friends who work in Pronto Soccorso, which would be emergency room in Italy, which pays much more money. Yeah. They get like uh, 7,000, 8,000 euros a month. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, with less working hours. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they work like 10 to 12 days a month, okay. but obviously always doing 12-hour shifts. So in the okay. end, hour-wise, it's quite the same, and yeah. they actually yeah. are much yeah. more tired. Yeah. But again, the monetary outcome is much better. Okay, so you could say uh, your income as a doctor in Italy is like kind of more than enough. Can we say that? As a person that is working without specialization, that is willing to work for like 40 hours, yeah. if you can find the work, which there are lots, Yes, it is. It is quite good. It it um, lets you have a quite nice lifestyle. So I want to ask something else now. So you previously mentioned that you had a chance to do research in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So as a student who is graduating from an Italian medical school, what do you think are the options? Like, okay, so you studied in Italy, and like, do you think you had more paths that you could take from, for example, who studied in some other country? let's say in Japan or let's say in Turkey? Well, that's a great question. Yeah. So first of all, having graduated from a school in the EU, in the European Union, yeah. from Italy, your diploma, your graduation, your laurea, let's mm -hmm. say, it's actually valid in a lot of countries. Anywhere in Europe it's valid, in the UK it's valid, in the US it's valid. Mm -hmm. I especially name these countries because these are the countries where the yeah. students yeah. tend to go the most for specialization. There are lots of students who go to the U.S., but in order to go to the U.S., you have to pass the steps, so you have to do USMLE route. Yeah. Then there is the U.K., there is the um, uh, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland uh, route that you can take. Obviously, the language is always a barrier, right? Like, yeah. in order to go to Switzerland, they have three languages, you have to speak at least two. Um, I personally wanted to go to the U.K., Mm -hmm. uh, which is why also I did research there because in my mind I wanted to go there to do specialization and I actually applied for specialization and I got in but UK has this kind of um, different approach to specialization which is that it's kind of like a lottery mm -hmm. they send you to wherever there's like yeah. a computer generated number that they give you and based on that number you go somewhere yeah. and they sent me to a very small town uh, called St. Edmundsbury which I really didn't want to go so I refused it and then upon thinking further on actually like I didn't just refuse it because they sent me to that city but I realized in the UK specialization route would take me a lot of years because again back then I wanted to do neurology so I realized doing neurology would mean I would have to do two years of foundation three years of core training and now five years of neurology specialized training 
which would mean 10 years of just education and not having the title of a neurologist yeah. with all the work. And I realized in UK you work many more hours than you work here in Italy. Yeah. So in the end, I decided that staying in Italy, staying in Italy, was the better option for me. Um, I will also be honest, like I, I grew bonds with Italy, like I... After I, living that many years. Exactly, yeah. exactly, like I felt emotionally attached and I kind of created a family here, so I didn't really want to leave. But I know a lot of people that moved to Switzerland, that moved to Germany, that moved to the UK, obviously always passing the language barrier. Mm -hmm. So for, but at least for the UK, I would say that it was a smoother process for you. Like it, is, it was student. very smooth. I just okay. had to show my English level and apply, mm -hmm. and they just like they just sent me somewhere. Also in Switzerland, I know people that very easily went. In Germany, very easily went. Obviously, in these countries, it's more CV based, yeah. so you need to have a curriculum that's quite competitive. So you need to do research. You need to show that you're interested in the specialty that you want to go to. But um, it is quite smooth for people that graduate from Italy. I know, for example, people that graduated from Turkey that I know. Um, they had certain troubles where they had to show their interest and the kind like the experience that they had weren't Like the experience that they had wasn't valued uh, as much as the experience that I had in Italy So obviously Italy being in the European Union and Italy is hospitals and institutes having a certain ranking in the, in the world uh, It definitely helped me Okay, so as the last thing what would you tell our students who want to study medicine in Italy as a fresh doctor? Oh. You just graduated. Your, okay. Yeah. Okay. Your experience matters. So, first of all, from the first year, learn Italian. From the first year? From the first year, okay. start learning Italian. Like, from the first year of medicine, just put yourself out there. Try to make Italian friends. Find yourself an Italian boyfriend, girlfriend. Whatever it takes to learn the language, you know? Just learn the language. Yeah? Then from the third or fourth year on, just throw yourself to the hospital. Sometimes they're gonna act like they don't want you there. Sometimes yeah. it's gonna be like you're gonna be the one extra student that they have to deal with, but push through because reading those cartelle cliniche that to you feel so boring in that moment or that feel like that you're not making any process, that's progress. That is going to be what keeps you going. That's going to be the thing that's gonna help you when you graduate. Because, like, always keep in mind that when you graduate, you're actually, in a way, competing with all the Italian graduates who spoke that language from the beginning. So any type of experience that you can get in the hospital, any patient that you can touch, any blood pressure that you can take, any blood, uh, blood sample that you can take, you know, all of them are going to be plus values for you. And um, the last thing that I would say is that when you're in the medicine course, it feels like your exams are what matters the most and like having as high grades as possible yeah. is going to be what makes you a great doctor but that's not correct so try to really experience medicine go to conferences talk to your professors try to be in interaction with, with patients and try to understand how medicine works in Italy because it's not what's written in the books so just like get your hands dirty as they say in english no like get your hands dirty get in the field and uh, like get something out of it that would be my suggestion okay that was a actually perfect like thing yeah. to end with and good luck thank you very good much luck. thank you very much for sharing your experiences yeah, thank you. and we hope to have another interview in future with you okay and yeah thank you very much yeah thank you for listening thank you for listening good luck bye bye